following podcast is brought to you exclusively by the Rad Rob Radio Network. On this week's edition of Straight Up 5 with Johnny Petraglia Jr., we'll be talking about the new announcer for Bull TV and, well, the incredible mistakes that he made this week already during USBC Masters. We're also going to take a look at the standings and see who's leading the pack and who is just below the cut line. We'll also have the imbecile of the week. Straight up five starts now. Hey guys, Chuck Ritchie here, formerly of Bull TV. Hey guys, this is Ryan Schaefer of track staff at Valley Bowling Center in Waverly, New York. And you're listening to Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. Yo, the boys from Straight Up Five, Rad Rob, Dr. Ocho, and of course, JP Jr. Pick it out. Fear the fro, baby. Welcome to Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. A hard-hitting, in-depth, cutting-edge look into the world of bowling. This podcast will not only cover all things bowling, but will also give you a raw look into real-life issues. You'll get unfettered access into the mind of one of the most gifted bowlers of this or any other generation. Strike, and they claim it. Somebody does it! So without further ado... Let's introduce you to the hosts of the show. Rad Rob, Rob Francois. Rad Rob, Rob Francois. Dr. Ocho. Dr. Ocho. And the incomparable Johnny Petraglia Jr. Johnny Petraglia Jr. Hey guys, welcome to Straight Up 5 with Johnny Petraglia Jr. I am your host, Rad Rob, Rob Francois. This is episode 110. We'll be talking about all things Bon Jovi tonight. Uh, it's a special edition of Strider 5 featuring Bon Jovi. Kyle Michalowski's in the house. Doyle, uh, Doyle Irons, sorry. Billy M. Amanda Moore, welcome, everybody. Welcome to those watching on YouTube, Johnny P's Facebook page, or our Twitter account, Strider 5. If you're not following us on Twitter or X or whatever they, they call it now with the, the young kids. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hello, Fred. Fuck the USBC. That's correct. That's good. Pico, what's going on, brother? Uh, follow us on X at Straight Up Five Podcast. That's Straight Up the Number Five Podcast on X and Instagram. Let's bring in our first co-host. He is the man with the golden mask. He also has white headphones for the first time since I've ever uh, since I've known him. Um, usually they're uh, they're colored, uh, but tonight they're white. He is the resident doctor of Straight Up Five. The man with the largest guns. On this show, Dr. Rocho. Good evening, sir. Okay, Archie Bunker. We don't say those words anymore. What's wrong with you? Who else are you trying to, like... You uh, saying white and colored now? Like, Jesus Christ. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it. That's, that's... Well, that's because you're not a smart guy. Doctor, they give doctorates to smart people. They give Popeye's hats to others. Hello, Nicole. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday. Nicole. And also, we are not sponsored by Popeyes. We're sponsored by Manscaped. It's not Popeyes, even though that tagline gets played more than anyone. We are sponsored by Manscaped. And uh, I don't know. I'm the only man in the house here, so that's why I'm scaped. Hello, Skyers. I would never leave you out. You are near and dear to my heart. Robert Echo. A lot of, lot of uh-huh. freaking, a uh, lot of, lot of uh, people already being whiny tonight. Like, what about me? Where's my guy? What about me, boss? How about me, boss? And what for you? Yeah. And what about me, boss? What for you? Yeah. And me, yeah. boss? What for you? you? Nico Puhar's in the house. Hello, Nico, our correspondent for our Facebook group. If you're not following us on Facebook, follow us at Straight Up Five Podcast. All right, let's bring in. Uh, hopefully, this one of these people have finally learned to hit the cutoff, man. And our host, he is. The sexiest man in the world. I'm not going through the whole spiel. It's Johnny Petraglia Jr. You're, you took up half our time, Ojo. So I like, I Hello, like Johnny. You, I like what you did there. Nice, nice league of their own reference in lieu of of <laughs> Evelyn. But she, I was obviously wanted to say hello to everybody. So now that she did, what's yeah, up, guys? Good to be here. As always, missed you. 
Sorry, I'm obviously still a little bit under the weather. Ocho, seriously, I should have been there tonight. But, man, I've been fighting all sorts of shit this week. So, try to get us here. Yeah, buddy. Sorry, sorry, you don't feel good, man. Hopefully, uh, you, you kick out soon. But I love your hat, by the way. Yeah, I know you're 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 stealing Rob's gimmick, by the way. Like, we can't have uh, two guys like just stealing the gimmick. You know, that's. I mean, right now I'm uh I'm not hundred percent, but I'm I'm I mean I'm back to normal. I'm about you know about seventy eight. Like, if you show up with a mask and then start sneezing, then like you literally stole everyone's gimmick on the show. <laughs> I have worn a mask before, so it could it could happen. It could happen. So, uh, gentlemen. We're not going to waste any time. We're, we're literally going to get to the imbeciles of the week right now because uh, that's uh, the topic that's on everyone's minds. So here we go. Hit the right button, dumbass. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. If you guys don't know how to use a seatbelt, just ring your call button and Tommy will come back there and hit you on the head with a tack hammer. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Here's the imbecile of the week. Some people are really f- stupid. Speaking of being fucking stupid, as the <laughs> intro says. So I'm be bleeping it. All right. I got to change. I got to name to unfettered Rob. Yeah, unfettered. Yeah. I thought it said fattered actually, so I thought it fit oh, really. So nice. I didn't. I my I didn't have my cheaters on, but that's, that's all right. That's nice. <laughs> that's like really fattered nice. rad Rob. I was like, well, oh, maybe yeah. we are sponsored by Popeyes. Good to go. <laughs> I'm working on that. Spot. We got fatter. Still early. Still early. We uh, <laughs> this week's imbeciles of the week comes to us courtesy of Bowl TV. One of their new announcers. I got a picture of this this jabroni here. There we go. Ben <coughs> Davis. Apparently, he's done some commentary for UFC. Uh, it's some sumo thing. He's a commissioner of some sumo league. That's that's weird. I know, Ocho. You don't you don't you don't sumo wrestle anymore, do you? Yeah, way to sell that one. Way to sell that. Appreciate that. Uh, on, uh, in a, it's a hobby, but just for a YouTube. So this channel. kid's about what? What do you say, Johnny? Like 24, 25 maybe? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have that many followers or uh, or subs as of yet. But uh, <laughs> he really doesn't. Like he's relatively new in uh, in the field. But uh, regardless of that, if you do get a gig, you would think that you would get a little bit of understanding of exactly what you're covering before you just like jump right in, right? And I think that's the whole thing that's that's so ignorant about it. It'd be like bringing somebody who's brand new to the sports casting world of, say, football, and they go in and they say, and here's Tom Brady uh, for the New England Patriots. Like, it's it's so embarrassing. It's such a knock on on the sport of bowling to have somebody who literally knows next to nothing about it and is going out there and delivering that he knows nothing about it. I, I do remember calling uh, Parker Peter Parker. I swear to God. I swear on my life because I remember everything. I had a trapdoor memory. And the one bowling event that I watched, I swear that Rob Stone called him Peter Parker. So apparently well, Rob at least Stone has, at least has kind of – So at least it's Parker getting ripped on every time unintentionally. But, like, that's pretty awful. It, it, Very well, awful. At least that's a, a, a bit of a joke. This guy literally. I, know, I don't his... think it was a joke. I do not. I, I do not. I okay. promise you. Somebody go fact check. I do not think it was a joke because he said it a few times unintentionally, and then I think Randy had to correct him. It's okay. talking mid oos ish, and that's well, when my brain was really active. Fair enough, but I think he's atoned for his sins with all the work he's done that uh, Belmo told us about. But uh, re. re- Regardless, uh, this guy literally had his broadcasting partner say his correct name right after he said it. And then the jackass went and said it again. I have a clip for you guys of a couple of things that he butchered. Still butchered it. Okay. Yeah, he did. So here is a little uh, highlight video from Ben Ben Davis. I almost call him Ben Stone. I have no, no awesome. idea why. Ben Davis. Here we go. All right. You can see 33 through 36. Cyril Cardines, Daria Pajak, Owen Darby, William Matefi, Idamaro Ruiz, Jeffrey Campbell, Christopher Prather, Anthony Santos, Ian Fitzpatrick, and Taylor Major. Round out this first group that we've got here, Ben. But we're going to start here. Daria Payok is how you pronounce that last name. Payok. Yeah, that's, it's a, that's, a, that's a tough one. There's, there. All right. Welcome back here. Lanes 41 to 44. We've got Rafael Medina, Justin Bond. Arguably one of the best youth bowlers to have ever bowled. Justin Bone, you know, 
his, his last name's Bone. That's all you really got to say. Also, <laughs> he's minus 11 after two. Wow. Not the start I expected, especially as Justin Bone, his paired counterpart, is plus 101 <laughs> after two. Justin Bond putting up a whole Benji Franklin up there. That, yeah. Cringeworthy. I mean, you can't make this shit up. Cringeworthy. It, what do you guys in the comments think? I mean, did he get paid to do this? Like, was he paid or was it like, hey, we need a, we need a, uh, I don't know, a, a volunteer. Uh, we're going to do a, a dart throwing contest, hit the balloon also, because that's really horrific. That's, and that's coming from the amateur. It, it's, <laughs> I mean, up, look at, look at what people are saying in the comments, dude. It's <laughs> like nobody even knows what to say. Somebody said earlier that they, Bull TV lost a subscriber. I, I totally agree with that. But the other thing was, is like, how difficult is it in this? We know just in, on in five minutes, we could gather a hundred names of people that are brilliant with commentating that would fucking do it in a heartbeat. How do you, why do you go find this guy? And he's not even like a name. He's, he's a newbie who obviously hasn't done his research for our sport anyway. And was told the correct pronunciation twice. <laughs> again. He literally, you're watching his dad for a good 15 minutes finish up the first game of the C-Squad, and he was calling PB3. He literally called him Parker Bone. I heard him say it. Mm -hmm. Same same spelling when maybe didn't know he was a kid, but it's the same fucking spelling. Why? And then his partner corrected him, and not really corrected him, but get, you know said his name correctly, and then he makes a stupid fucking joke about putting up a Benjamin at the end. He called him Justin Bond again, like, Fuck me, dude. This guy is six ways from six ways of stupid. Um, it's sad. It really is. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Fred John Stevenson canceled already. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, well, you should have just given me your subscription because I don't watch anyway. So <laughs> that's true. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the inflections on, of the names were cringeworthy on anybody that he announced. I mean, he's he's got a cool voice. I mean, he's got he's got you know some personality, but fuck, man, at least like. I'm surprised he didn't say Fitzpatrick. That's, that's a of, great point, then. <laughs> he got El Demaro Ruiz right, right, and not both. He aced yeah. that one. Yeah, he, um, he must have stood in the mirror for like an hour and a half, though, doing that, thinking that bonds <laughs> easy. And that's he also what, said uh, that uh, Alexis Runk was Brandon's little sister. David, I was just gonna, I was just gonna bring that up. I was actually gonna say Anthony reached out. And Alexis Runk is is Anthony Nyer's sister, his little sister Alexis, who's married to Brandon Runk. And the announcer, I think he said that they were brother and sister, not that they were married. Just just to add to the laundry list of not doing your homework or, or know what you've got in front of you. And the guy before that that you threw up, he said, okay. why would you bring in somebody brand new out of all events a major? With 450-some-odd entries that they got at the Masters, it's the biggest turnout of the year still. And this is when you decide to bring in somebody who people now don't even want to fucking listen to the major because you got this asshole in the booth. Not this asshole in the booth, but um, what's the word? Um, this uneducated person. Yahoo, Ham and Egger. Yeah. Yeah. It's what it, if is it possible that somebody they had lined up, just their car broke down. And so they went to the Waffle House like across the way and they were like, hey, let me hear you talk. And the guy was like, well, we got. Angela Rackham, you're in. Let's go. Don't pronounce the H in bone. The Who H is the silent. What's up, yeah. Boo? Uh, like, uh, yeah. what's his name? Just just had on the on that last post. They said, uh, he said, you know, I've done some Neba commentating in the past, and I've had some tough names, but I would never get one wrong. That's been famous for 34 years. But that's, he literally got his dad. He got that's Parker's exactly name. The point. But, that's but he exactly. got part. He got Parker's name right. Like yeah. I, again, I can understand the correlation if he doesn't know that Justin was his kid. But it's literally the same fucking. Maybe until of the he name. wins a title, he's not going to let him have the name. I don't know. It could be like some uh, insider shit. really reaching I, at this I point. I it's, it's fine. Just the guy's no, name is all the month. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Rogers says we should bring him on the show. We should. She's like, so uh, you know, what are you thinking? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, do we want to keep harping on this, or we want to change? Sure. It? I mean, if you want to, sure. I mean, we got time to fill. Uh, I mean, you know. we. Well, I mean, it, I. I don't think everything's been said, as far as um, you 
Rob's dying right now. You know what the worst? Having a stroke in the corner. Just FYI, I look at Rob right now in the corner. He's either vomiting. Pu- uh, oh, he's probably sucking well, chicken I, grease I out of his straw. Actually, <laughs> he's drinking probably like a two liter of orange Fanta out of a big it's straw. Chicken- Thinking it was a chicken grease out of a straw, all salty. Uh, and- Skyer uh, says, "Am I the only one that can't see the comments on the Facebook feed?" Yes, you're literally the only one. Sucks to suck, bro. That's because you whined about it in the beginning. <laughs> Where's my plug? Where, where about me, guys? <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I haven't watched anything from today, so that was that was what happened yesterday or, or Monday, I believe. Um, but uh, I think Sparone's right, by the way. He was, and it, but he's saving he, he, it's reheated. Rudy Rev's in the house. What's going on, brother? Um, yeah, dude, it's it, it is what it is. Um, they have a lot of squads, you know, there's a lot of bowling. They have, you know, not the regular guys can't do it all. I, I want to say one of them was with them for a little bit. I don't know if it's Craig or um, oh, I can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, he, he was there. Um, with them, but you know, your broadcasting partner should at least correct you. He corrected him on Daria. He should be like, You mean uh, Justin Bone? Oh, yeah, sorry, Justin Bone. Um, like, ain't there like little notes you just write with a with a long over the O, or do they not, do they not teach that anymore? Chuck Ritchie, formerly a bold TV, which God bless you, you you should be there doing this instead of this fucking dumbass we got here, uh, Ben Davis. But, uh, Chuck Ritchie, who missed the Brandon Bond match today <laughs> because he isn't there anymore. Um, uh, anyway, let, let's let's talk about what what actually matters, and that is uh, the actual competition. Uh, Australia's own, not Belmo, but Sam Cooley was on fire, uh, surging to the top of the list. He is uh, plus four thirty five right now, which is holy shit. He he went on he went on fire uh, during the second round. Uh, and the aforementioned uh, uh, Justin Bone is still, I believe, he's in the top. He uh, 30. close. He's, he's twenty. Um, hey, are is, are Cooley and Cheeks related? Uh, I don't know. Cheeks is in the uh, Hello, in the chat. Is, is are Cooley and Cheeks? They got to be related by like a. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, I forgot Cooley and Cheeks, hundred uh, yeah. percent. And right. uh, yeah, just for J- sure. Justin Bone is 29th right now, plus 241. So I'm like, even that, you know, yeah, there's plus there's no way that can't be correct. Justin, Justin is around uh, the number. He's around 60. He's going to be around 60th, right? Well, let me update because I just looked at this right yeah. before we went on. This is uh, A and C after 15, and B after 10 games. Uh, let's see. God bless PBA.com. Yeah, Justin wound up. He's in 60th at the plus 222. And uh, uh, there's only one squad left, and that is B squad, which bowls this evening. So the link that PBA.com took me to was was old. Shocker. That's uh... that's all right. But uh, you know what? While we're on the discussion, I'm going to I'm going to address the elephant in the room, and I'm going to side with uh, my left handed homies here for a little while because it's no secret that this year hasn't been the best on the left side of the lane so far. But when you have 450 bowlers competing in one event like the USBC Masters, which is a major, it's double money. All the extras are there, not to mention all these guys are out there trying to make their livings in life. So aside from their talent, it would be nice to actually go somewhere and be able to successfully earn money, even if you have a bad week, like you just keep a grind. Yeah. But there's 450 bowlers across three squads going on at the Sun Coast right now. And you mean to tell me that one left-hander is going to make the top 64? Mm. One. That to me is mm, – I, I don't even know where I want to go with this because I always am the guy that's trying to find the happy medium and say that shit balances out, you know, which it eventually does. But – Man, oh man, they you figured maybe they would have tried to do something with uh fixings, trying to give the lefties a little bit of something, so at least maybe one or two guys, maybe three guys got a check. Yeah. But that many entries and and you got one lefty in the top 64, that's that's a train wreck kind of mistake, man. And I and I feel very, very deeply for all the lefties out there, especially this season, but especially this week, trying to make a living out there. I'm going to talk to Butters about it later. I, I'm assuming he's just beside himself right now. 
I mean, especially with with the hammer guys, with 70 AD coming out and the hammer effect, you, you'd think those balls would be in play. But, I mean, looking looking from what I saw from, from early qualifying, um, people are having trouble on the fresh, and people on the burn seem to be, uh, seem to be bowling better. Um, and it's, what, a 43-foot pattern. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to watch, especially watching Parker early. Um, you know, he just had trouble figuring out. Uh, and this is a guy, obviously, that's, that's seen it all, done it all. Um, you know, but we know Parker, he likes to be on the left side of the, uh, of the, uh, left side of the approach, right? Like he doesn't usually play across and, and, and swing it out. So does that hurt him, uh, Johnny? Uh, this week, it didn't really matter what you did on the left side of the lane. It didn't matter if you threw it like Brandon Bon Jovi, if you threw it like Parker bone, if you threw it like, uh, Michael Holloman, it didn't really matter if you threw it like George Gohagen. If you were on the left side of the lane this week, you were dead. Yeah. So uh, when when there's that many elements impeding what you can do on your side of the lane to a point that every version of you, I mean, it like this is like saying Earl Anthony, Jason Couch, my dad, and I don't know, John Gant, just to give you like a range of four completely different games, mm-hmm. but all four of them were shut out. You couldn't dump it up six like Earl. You couldn't wheel the fourth hour like Couch. You couldn't shove it up, you know, 15 to 10 like Gant. You couldn't play the rail like Parker. You you just are, are screwed. And a 43-foot pattern with however many mills there are in a place like Suncoast where the heads are treacherous and the racks are atrocious, and now you don't have the luxury of the urethane balls. Now you only have the harder surface ones. The lefties are now not only forced to use more resin, but they're now using resin on a pattern where there's not enough of them to ever make the blend. Right. So what you just said earlier was they're trying to stay close on the fresh and then get them in, in the burn blocks. The lefties have them just as hard, if not worse, on the fresh, but they never get the blend of the night block. Yeah. So when you watch in the righties grind their ass off for 10, 20, 10, 40 for five, and you see, oh, here's a lefty that shot 10, 20. Well, that's the best block that lefty's going to have. Right. Well, that's probably the worst one this righty's going to have. And as the and as the week progresses, we see it every time. There'll be astronomical matches shot against. And it's going to be a great tournament. I mean, there's a lot of big, great names in there. But, again, just speaking to what happens in events like this, this is what happens over and over and over again. And the lane maintenance crew has not figured out a way to just keep them somewhat even yeah. and this year it's really really gotten to a point that it's extremely noticeable especially when you see a guy like belmo who was struggling early uh was down around the cut after the first uh two rounds uh you know he's up there in the top what i think he's top five now top uh where am i at here look at the latest one he's uh ninth so i mean he was struggling early and then he figured it out because obviously everyone you know there's so many righties in the field too um, you know, that, that gives them a, a better chance. It, it, it sucks. I mean, it, you'd think at this point now, there'd be something that, I, I don't want to say give lefties an edge, but at least something that kind of evens the, the playing field. And it's just, it, it's it's just not that way. I mean, I, I, and it's not every tournament, obviously. Uh, but with something like this, like the major, uh, like the Masters or, or the U.S. Open, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard. Um, what do you think could be done, Johnny, to try to kind of even the playing field? Tell you the truth, I actually don't really even know the answer. It's a great question. I I think that the elimination of the urethane balls really, really hurt the lefts the, the lefties with the way the lanes are playing these days with, with the two-handed power game, the evolution of of scorching up the front part of the lane, and it's I, I really I don't have a definitive answer of what they could possibly do right now because, like we said earlier, it's not just one specific left-hander that's struggling. I mean, you have we we haven't seen Packy, we haven't seen Jesper, we haven't seen Buttruff, we haven't seen Anthony Nyer. These are all different kinds of games, and none of them. The only lefty I think we've seen this year that I can recall is Nate Stubler. Yeah. And I think maybe we saw Matt Russo once, if if I recall correctly, if I recall correctly. But there's there they've been so few and far between. We haven't seen any Kevin Williams. We haven't seen anybody like that. 
Simonelli has been very, very vocal about the way his season's gone. Yep. Um, but that just goes to show you that they're whatever they're all collectively trying, nothing is working. So it's not that you have to I, I'm not saying give up, but there does got to come a point where you've got to, I guess, try and shut your brain down because it's apparent to everybody what's going on right now. And even right-handers are, are kind of self-spoken about this right now because they're just feeding on what they got on top of everything. But it's it's uh, it's got to be comforting for right-handers to know that there is basically no chance this season for the lefties to run away with it just based off – what's available to them as far as their equipment and what's available to everybody that's out at, and, and what they're actually bowling on, on the lanes. Yeah. I mean, I, I follow Kim Bollaby on Facebook and he even got to the point a few weeks ago where he's like, I don't even know if I want to bowl anymore. I mean, that's, that's just how bad it's been getting it. And obviously you and butters had a heart to heart and he's been very frustrated as well. And it's just, uh, sure. You know, they, they have a, they're defeated before they even walk in the bowling center at this point. Uh, and it doesn't matter what equipment they have or what they throw. It just, it's, it just, it's just not working. Um, and it sucks, man. I hate it because there's so many talented bowlers out there. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't think there's any conspiracies behind it. I don't think anybody's, you know, walling up the right side just, just to have, you know, the top bowlers like Simo and, and Belmo. I mean, they're going to figure out anyway. But I, I don't think there's any nefarious things going on. Um, but I, hopefully, they can. They can figure it out. I hope so too, man. It's uh, it's it's got to be. It's so depressing for the guys that are out there. You know, it's, it's just it's just sad, you know. And without getting too much into the lefty righty debate, I mean, numbers don't lie, and and what's going on out there right now, they they need to figure out something. Yeah. Now, and they obviously can't bring back the the softer urethane balls because when they had those, they were a little bit lopsided on the left side of the lane. So now what do you do? What's what's the happy medium? But I think that the uh, the hardness rule kind of backfired on them hardcore. Because aside from the first week at the players where everybody was throwing those 78 UIQs and the, the show that Ryan Barnes made and Stoobs, um, we haven't really seen a urethane-dominated show like that throughout the, the rest of the season thus far. True. So, And what's crazy is I've never seen – so many lefties now being forced to throw resin, but it kind of does prove the point of like why, you know, a lefty doesn't want to throw urethane and plastic all the time, guys. Let's just throw that out there, especially high rev lefties. We want to throw resin. We would like to do what the right handers do. We just can't because there's never any time for the lanes to blend and we never create any hold and we never create any bump. So right. It's not like we're one dimensional and we want to play where we're playing. We're playing the only thing that the lanes allow us to play. So when you guys, when, when say a Belmo goes and shoots 50 over his first block, now he's in his locker room or he's in his hotel room and he's assessing what surface changes, what balls he's going to bring, how he's going to attack the lanes differently. So he could go a hundred and 150 over in the next two blocks. What the lefty is doing after he goes 20 over on day one, he goes, Oh my God. I just bowled the best five games of my life, grinded my ass off and averaged 204 for the day. And I don't know if I can do that two more times. And even if I do, it's not going to get me a check this week. That's fucking sad, man. And it happens way too often. Way too often. It's a big commitment to be out there and tour and to put in the money and to be away from home and your family and all that. It's just, uh, and to get discouraged, like I said, before you even walk into the bowling center, knowing that it's going to be a fucking tough grind and you have it harder than the rest. It's, uh, it, it's, it sucks. It sucks. There's not much more we can say on it, but, um, very good points, Johnny, as always. I, I asked you a question earlier this morning. I showed you a screenshot from Darren Tang, who was, just about playing on the other approach uh, and swinging it out as far as he could. I've seen that from him uh, pretty often uh, following his YouTube channel. Uh, I believe it was, I think it was last year at the U.S. Open, he was actually standing as far left as he could and lofting it out to the arrows because uh, he couldn't find anything that works. We talked to the old guys about hand manipulation and hand tricks and doing different things to flatten out your wrist or, you know, try to take some hand out of it and, and, and put less revs into it. I'm not, 
I don't want to single Darren out because I'm sure he's not the only one, but if you're playing that far left as a righty, shouldn't you be able to do something other than ball change with your hand to try to hit the pocket without knocking the other guy off the, you know, the, the approach next to him? Uh, if he's lofting, he's not exactly hitting the lefty. Well, I mean, he, he wasn't spot, lofting. So. This week, but I'm, I just use that as an example. But I mean, he, I know what you're saying like the Chris. Are you trying to ask me like, there's got to be a different way, like with hand manipulation, to not have to move so far to the left? Yeah, is that is that a loss? The newer... Aren't they? Is with the bowling no, ball that's, really? That's that's what the patterns tell you you have to do in order to maximize carry and strike percentage. They're all those guys are the best guys. They're the best in the world. They're they're doing what the pattern tells them to. You may get a rare occasion on say like a, a one that I distinctly remember was a show that Norm Duke made it at the shark championship and on the shark pattern, which was like 45 to 47 feet. In Everybody's length, deep inside. And exactly. If you do the rule of 31, you want the ball to be around 16 at the break point. And the way to get the ball to 16 with the proper angle through the pins is from, is from deep inside. Right. Well, Norm Duke made that TV show and ran the ladder, won all four matches, and won the title, throwing the ball straight up five. He figured out a way to play a zone that you're not allowed to play, mm -hmm. and it happened to be the way to win. We also saw Mike Machuga do it on a, in the Chameleon Championship when he ran the ladder, playing out with a mixture of three or four different balls when everybody else on the show was where you're supposed to be on Chameleon, even though that one you could play multiple angles. Mm -hmm. But at no point should you be anywhere near where Machuga was compared to everybody else. And he went, but like, we see that shit happen here and there. Yeah. But I'm sure throughout the course of a tournament, the guys try, but most likely it's because the heads are completely gone. So as soon as that ball touches the lane, it's hooking. So even if you deaden your hand to get it through there, it doesn't have enough gusto to change direction down lane. Yeah, then you're just going to pick off your 10 pin or, or wash out or something like that. Yeah, really. Or if it hits it, it hits like a bag of dicks. It's yeah, just, and then it, rolls out. And like, or like, and again, you leave a, a bucket or it's fucking Ocho, man. Fair it's enough. So when you see that migration path, it's because it's what they do. Now, contrary to that, if you go watch the women, you very, 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 very rarely see the women that deep. Because they don't destroy oil patterns the way that men do. Right. Sorry if that's fucking sexist to our sensitive viewers, but they just they break no, down. That's actually it's, a fact. It's because the rev rate yeah. isn't. As I mean, deep. it's literally a fact. Yeah. Right. So that's why it doesn't. It's, yeah, to the guys. Have, it's a compliment to the women. It's a detriment to the guys because the women at least can stay in play. <laughs> and uh, what the what the hell was it going to G G G G I, so I have. I've never, I've never I seen have. Dagadix hit. I have well, a lot. Come watch me bowl league. You'll know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be I have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I collect them. I have lots of bags. So <laughs> uh, I forgot what the hell I was going to say now. I don't think it matters. It's just... Probably <laughs> no, important. Uh, you're talking about the uh, lower rev rate from the women and not tearing yeah, up. And then you oh, did this yeah, whole, that's... I'm sorry if it's sexist. As you're <laughs> Thank you. You, see, you got me back. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> well, well, yeah, what I was going to say was – um. See, I, I lost it again. That women should be yeah. doing this instead of bowling? Was that what you were going to say? I said there's a lot more women nowadays that curve the ball compared to yesteryear. Like yesteryear, we had Kelly Kulik and Michelle Feldman, um, uh, Leanne Hulsenberg. And that was like – that was – Wendy McPherson was kind of in the middle. But now you got Daria. You got Verity. You got Stephanie Zavala. You got Dasha. You got Ashley Galante. Like There's a lot of – bigger wheeling women now than there was 20 years ago and they still don't destroy the patterns the way that that, that the men do so they're typically allowed to stay in the zones that the pattern may not necessarily say you can for a lot longer than the men gotcha uh by the way jeff riggles chimes in from 11th frame.com fyi pba is not doing the lanes this week and didn't do them in the us open so conflating those two tournaments with pba tour tournaments is wrong that I is knew correct it. i knew it Blame Chad Murphy. I knew it. Can we blame Chad? Can we blame Chad for uh, for the, the dipshit announcer that's in there this week as well? Does he have anything to do with that? Uh, we can blame Chad for weapons of mass destruction if we need to. At this point, like, 
Yeah, I think Canada I think Chad invaded using Russia. Using a bowling ball from two thousand eight. <laughs> Hell of it. Well, that's true. Well, I still got you beat minor from ninety three. So if you don't yeah. use them. Um, no, well, I wasn't sure, Johnny. That's why I still use why, my balls. That's why I asked that question because I wasn't, you know, I'm not familiar with. Well, fuck, I'm just not familiar with with bowling nowadays since I haven't bowled in I don't know fucking how long. Hey, but, why are uh, you here anyway? Like you have a purple, I'm a host, green bowling I'm a, ball, and I'm, I'm a pe- right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm uh, mentoring Ben Davis. Uh, we're, we just host. We know nothing about bowling at all, ben and uh, we're, well, no, that's my job. So why are you here? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I haven't bowled since the last time I checked my email. Thanks, Chuck. I appreciate that. Good point. So. Oh, yeah. And by the way, we did get your email from uh, – he had his Windows 98 computer rebooted. Uh, I purposely paid for it. And um, whoever that was that emailed us from mindspring.com, thank you. No, we don't have any Columbia U dots. Back to you so late. <laughs> Rudy Rev says, Bag of Dicks is my new go-to. Somebody call the art department and get some new shirts to manscape your bag of dicks. And then uh, I was answering a text from Justin Bond. Okay, good. <laughs> Has he had anything to say about any of this? I'm sure he's heard of it. Uh, I haven't spoken to him, honestly. That was just at least the guy didn't pronounce the H. <laughs> <laughs> and he said Bahan. Like maybe we really, really got a freaking rip on him. Yeah, agreed. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to look at the bright side. The drink is half full. This is what happens when we have no guests. My biceps are way Thir- full. 37 minutes, we're out of material already. That's all. That's because okay. you guys don't talk about league anymore. That's the problem. That's Ocho. where you guys screw up. Ocho, how are you doing your league, buddy? Don't worry about it. And nobody should ever challenge Ocho in league anymore because I'm unconscious. Who the hell was it that weeks ago, I'll bowl Ocho? No, you will not. I guarantee you, you will not. I got 10 masks that guarantee you won't. Because I'm in That's a zone, nice. damn it. Good evening. I wouldn't bowl Ocho at Howell. No. I wouldn't bowl Ocho at Howell. Besides him. Well, I did lose one bet unintentionally. Go on. But that's not the point. You know what? I, 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 you know, you know how well, you nobody can find Waldo? I'm why nobody can find Waldo. Waldo doesn't want to bowl Ocho. That's what I'm saying. Chuck okay. Ritchie says he'll bowl you for a mask. <clears throat> I'll just give you a mask. Give me 100 bucks. When are we going to do the unmasking of the Oach? What mask? I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Still, the Ocho zone. Yeah, well, Ocho's in his zone. He's right. This guy's right. Ocho's in his zone. How about this? Real quick. You know, I I should. How about we at least. Come on, a warning sign. You know how, like, uh, cigarettes said that it's detrimental to your psyche? That's what that's what Ocho is. You sure. do not want to challenge Ocho. It's detrimental to your bowling health. Do not challenge Ocho or the. Well, I know better than to challenge you at Howell. That's for sure. Except uh, you're one and zero, but that's not the point. Let's go for a bold uh, little prediction here. I know it's early and it's a complete, you know, kind of luck of the draw, luck of the lane selection, luck of everything when it comes to this tournament, which is why we have so many people you've heard of for the first time as master's champion but uh let's boldly pick who we think is gonna take it all this week i'm gonna go with the four-time champ jason belmonte he needs uh a big win to catch up this he's seventh in points right now so i see him making uh making big moves here during match play and we have a double elimination for uh format this week as well mm-hmm. uh and the past champion last year's champion anthony simonson uh, if he doesn't make the cut, he still has another chance to get in uh, based on winning last year. So that's another wrinkle. He can just pretty, and they mentioned on the show that he can pretty much just experiment, you know, all week. Yeah, the way, it, the way it works if you're the champion is you can bowl the qualifying. You don't have to, but if yeah. you choose to bowl qualifying you and you are seated higher than 64th, that's where you're seated. But uh, the the previous champion is guaranteed the 64 seed. So. Even if he were to finish, say, 300th, he'd still be the 64 seed yep. in the matches. Uh, so who are you going with, Johnny? Uh, I was going to take uh, Belmo, too. I think that it's – I think that the break – between his break and the break, he's already he's already in Belmo form, you know, steady. He's already climbing. And 
his his match play record is undoubtedly one of the greatest in history. True. Another guy I would like to see make it far uh, is Tommy Jones. I'd like to see him get another major. Ocho, what are your thoughts? Who do you think will win this week? So we're done with league talk. We'll, we'll get back right? into it. Oh, yes. Just, just I'm going with Belmo. He's, he's, it's it's kind of hard to do Ooh, that. Sweet. I know, I know. It's it's like when Jeremy McGrath was winning all those Supercross races. I know everybody knows Supercross. The king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath, won freaking seven titles. He's got 72 uh, freaking victories, four, 30 ahead of anybody else. Everybody picked Jeremy McGrath. But Belmo isn't quite – he's the best now, but I'm going with Belmo. Let's uh, run down the top – 15 here. I'll do it in honor of, of Ben Davis. I'll, uh, I'll butcher everyone's name. We have uh, Marcus Janson in first. We got Sam Coulet in second. Justin Viach in third. Related to Chayax, too. Remember <laughs> that. Carlos Grandios is in fourth. <laughs> Jorgio Kleinaz in fifth. Petey Vergas in sixth. Robin Pearson in seventh. Patrick Dombrowski in eighth. Uh, Jason Belmonte is in ninth. Uh, we have Kyle Tropp in tenth. It's Sorry. Trout. <laughs> God. Sound it out, Rob. Lavery Jesus. Spahar in eleventh. Uh, Tyler Cortez Schmuck in twelfth. Uh, we got Anal mm-hmm. Johnson in thirteenth. Uh, Jarno Lady in 14th, <laughs> and Maxime Dubois rounds out the top 15. <laughs> nice work. Grant Dubois doing the announcing, and <laughs> here we are. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Rob Frank Cuis sounding out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to league talk. Ocho, what did you shoot last week, brother? Doesn't matter. I just won. Uh, I won everything. God. I won everything. God damn it! You literally bitched about leaving league talk, and now you. Don't no, I want to talk, talk my shit and say how much of a detriment it is to challenge Ocho in league. That's all. I'm unconscious. My average is probably two eighty something at this point. That's how. That's how freaking insane I am. Take it away, Johnny. Tell them how good I am on league. He's it's your unbe- job now. He's unbeatable at Howell. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. What's this at Howell thing? Because oh, you don't bowl anywhere else. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> okay. Well, That's he's, not the point. From what Imagine I've seen, me bowling somewhere else. From what I've seen, he's unbeatable. That's fair. Okay. At, at Howell Lanes. Uh, Johnny, you bowl on Mondays and Tuesdays. How are uh, How are you doing so far? I'm finally in a consistent rhythm at Howell where I'm shooting high sixes, low sevens pretty much every week. So I got somewhat comfortable at Howell. Um, Carolier still is like the biggest ego stroke of my life. I feel like an absolute, I feel like EJ Tackett when I bullet uh, Carolier. <laughs> the, the way the pins fall, how fast I throw it, how committed I am at the foul line. Carolier is like, if I, if I could add a couple more elements to, to how to Carolier, that is my heaven. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'd like to go when I die. I you know it sounds weird. But put put Carolier on like a tropical island somewhere. I could live there forever. Maybe we can bury you under under lane two. So or, if you know the yeah. shot there, would 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 Ocho then be even better there, or would it just be a, <laughs> a you know, lateral move? Just uh, for you want a dead. You want hey, look, real. Here is full transparency. No ego stroking. If I bowled you ten times at Howell Lanes, I would lose either three to seven or four no. to six. No. Shut up for a minute. I say six eight. Shut up for a minute. I would lose three seven or four six. If we bowled against each other at Carolier, ten nothing you. You would either lose ten zero or nine one. Okay, I'd get one out of it. Okay. Here. Well, so my score would be the same. You're just that much in the zone. Is that what you're 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 that or am I struggling you know there? We always talk about a bowler has an A game. Yes. Well, everything that I've ever been born and bred to do in the sport of bowling, I can do it to 100% of my capabilities without one mental thought at Carolier Lanes. The true one of a house hack. So (laughs) I I could win one game. So you're saying there's a chance. I read. Yes. Uh, We 
we have an official challenge from JD Santaluccia. He'll Amanda, bowl you. Wait, wait, wait. Who is this Amanda chick? Wait a second. Who is this Amanda? Amanda is our number chick? one. Amanda's our number Get one. Get her fan. up here. I met Amanda in Vegas. She's the best. We she's will awesome. get her up here. Yeah. Well, she she's a little she, bark, you know, don't write, write checks that your ass can't cash, Amanda. Yes, sir. She said hello. I'm pretty sure she would own you. Ass, though. I'm not, that's not yeah. a joke. That should, yeah. I'm sure no, she there's she no is. doubt. Yes, she would. There's no doubt. Um, if she got lucky enough to bowl against me. Again, yeah. it's and hazardous to your health. But she's a refty. You know what that is, right? So good. I'm getting 20. Works. Yeah. I got a that's 148 right. average, Amanda. Quit picking on me. Let it go. I don't like this. Apparently, there's people in line that want to bowl Ocho now. Chuck Ritchie wants to uh, wants to bowl. He says my challenge wasn't legit. He'll drive to New Jersey. We welcome that. Of course, you get 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 in line. Come out! I'll knock him down. Are you kidding me? I'll walk in. I'll smoke everybody. I am. Amanda says, "Oh, this ass can cash the checks. Uh, she is a reverse hook bowler. Does that mean? Uh, I don't know what that means. So she's a backup bowler." Yes, a refty. A refty. It's great gotcha. that she said her ass can count. See, now, it, now when it's you on. said refty, I, I thought maybe she studied in Japan, uh, but that's just me. Oh, no, no, no. Robster Cross. So uh, <laughs> why don't we get the uh, sponsors of Manscaped to put this together? Uh, rah, 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 rah. Okay. <laughs> fly Amanda out. She can stay with us for a month if she wants. Uh Cook the meals, probably clean the floors a little bit, and then we'll go bowling. Tell me that wouldn't be fun. Okay. Yeah, it sounds fun for her. Yeah. <laughs> it's on Manscaped. We're doing this. Rob, call. I'll call him. I'll, I will. I will get in touch with our rep, and I will. I will make that happen. The Manscaped Ocho Challenge. Uh, it's coined by Chuck Ritchie. That's she uh, gets the get... Manscaped Ocho. <laughs> All right, she forfeits. I guarantee that. <laughs> This show is off the rails. This is what um, you guys wanted. We need one of these bullshit sessions once we we can't have we, a guest. Maybe every, I should be fa- we need a bullshit no. session once in a while. I no, it's true. It's true. I, I I do miss kind. Of, I love our guests. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, uh, we've talked course. to some amazing people, but we we this kind of gets back to the heart of what this show was when it originally started. Just exactly. We got to awesome. get Brad Miller on here soon, though. We do need Brad Miller on here. Didn't uh didn't the dipshit Ben Davis fuck his his him up too? Thought he what was somebody he call else. Call him Malar. There's no really? way. Or... I, I would love to hear that. What? Did he somebody on? I think was, really was Chuck. There's... I swear no, to God, somebody said no... that he could fuse Brad Miller up. with somebody else. Oh yeah. Oh they, oh, they oh never mind. Something. I'm sorry. I thought you meant he screwed up his pronunciation. I'm sorry. Show. It said something about the Brad and Kyle show incorrectly. If I if uh. Hmm. And here's Brad Sherman and Kyle Miller getting up to. Uh, I, I don't want to butcher his name, but Matt Zwieg, Matt Zieg. Okay, Zwieg. Uh, and Brad Miller are on B Squad. He uh, Chuck thinks he messed them up yesterday and called them the the, the other's name uh, by accident, which is oh. uh, that, that's kind of funny. No, it, actually. it was intentional. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brad- Brett Lorger says uh, even closed captions said bone. That's fucking hilarious. That's. <laughs> Oh, that's so yeah. good. Um, but yes, I, I'll work on getting Brad Miller on the show because I know uh, you have a lot to, to talk to him about, Johnny. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, th- it, it's funny that it's the running joke of the show and everybody knows it. Like, it's just fucking even when I'm watching bold TV, somebody that watches their show will see Brad on there and mention <laughs> that it's like your fucking favorite bowler or some shit like that. It's, so Amanda it's, uh, just DM'd me, said, please keep flexing. Your biceps will distract me. You'll win every time. I have it right here. It's in my phone. Literally, she just... Thank you, Amanda. You you know what? I forfeit hey, to you for you sending you that. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, this is the quote of the week. Brad Miller, the guy who looks like Tommy Pickles grown up. <laughs> <laughs> I love David. Winner. Oh, you win. You win this week. Yes. <laughs> they win. <laughs> yes. That is the quote of the week. Oh, Thank my you. God. It's something now, people don't – someone's going to go in their comments and start posting that on the show. And I'm going to – I'm not going to feel bad, but I'm going to laugh every time. Tommy Pickles, <laughs> president. Oh, that's fucking great. Poor that guy. is so good. 
Um, John, I, I, I meant That's to ask almost you. Almost unfair, Johnny. Before we wrap up the league talk, uh, what are you averaging on Mondays and Tuesdays? Do you know? I'm low two twenties on Monday and mid two thirties on Tuesday. Yeah, I would cheer. You're, you're fucked. There's no way. You could. I'm two twenty two. You couldn't beat him in either house. That's my, my weight, my cholesterol. <laughs> My weight, my cholesterol, my freaking uh, – how many times I can bench it? 48 times? I, I will Shit. tell you, one yeah, of the no, contributing no, factors, I think, to my struggles on Monday night is – I guys got to remember, I work graveyard. So Monday nights, I clock in at 10 p.m. My league starts at – He's bowling right before work. My league starts at 6.30 p.m. We get done with throwing the last shot right around 9.30. So when I'm in Jersey – I'm about 15 minutes from dad's place, mom and dad's place. So I got to legit finish my last shot, change into my shoes, throw my shit in my car, get home, get clocked in, walk Evelyn, and then start working until 6 a.m. So I never go to league on Monday nights committed to bowling. I go there making sure I have good time management because if it looks like I can't finish game three and have to leave, I need to be aware of that. I can't be drinking. So it's, I don't, I don't enjoy, I, I would enjoy bowling Mondays a hell of a lot more. My average would reflect that if that wasn't in the back of my mind the entire time I was bowling. And Tuesdays is your start of your weekend. In right. Sense, so. Exactly. And Tuesday is my Saturday night. And I bowl a quick doubles league with a good friend. And then I always bowl with JD's son, Joseph, when we're done. For at least three or four games, we bowl until the bowling alley closes around 10, 30, 11. They start kicking people out. And then uh, and that's my Saturday night. And I usually, not only am I in the comfortable place, like I said earlier with Carolier, but I know that when I take my shoes off, I get to relax and hang out with everybody. That's really cool, JD's kid, to bowl with, with you and, and kind of give you the rub and, you know, mentor you a little bit. I mean, that's, uh, that's really good. That's really good of him to do that. So I love him for it. Uh, John, speaking of which, JD says your ball hits like it's 25 pounds upstairs and 10 downstairs at Carolier. That is exactly right. Uh, Amanda Moore has an update. Downstairs, basically. Amanda has an update to the uh, alleged DM that she sent you. Uh, she said, I did She's not, lying. Ocho. There's a reason Petraglia is the sexiest man in bowling, not you. Oh, oh I'm not in bowling. I am everywhere. <sighs> he can That's be the world's smartest like horse if he right. wants. That's yeah. fine by me. Uh, Johnny Sparone, that was chicken grease chapstick that I use, courtesy of Popeyes. <laughs> Chuck says, didn't know Chippendales was open from 10 to 6. That's that's. Oh, awesome. Chuck, thank you. That's your night. I did. We've been there a bunch of... Oh, no shit. Never mind. Forget I said that. I, I ran out of singles. I mean, I... Can I, you... Was, uh, let's... We'll, we'll edit that out on the uh, audio version. Sure. And a plot out. Yeah, what, what'd you say, Ouch? I didn't hear you. The bastard stole my cake. My cake. We still have 87 strong in here. Thank you, everybody, for, for watching us. We have the... Soink, right, everybody. Well, well, and fuck Doc <laughs> Sullivan. We people on our, our, our Twitter page watching right now. That's, uh, that's cool. Hey, Rob, why don't you tell everybody about our audio podcast, where if they listen on hey. iTunes or... Hey, guys. If you don't listen to us, if, uh, they, if you're only watching YouTube or Johnny's Facebook or our X page, uh, and you want to listen to us on the go and you're ready to work... We're audio version, Amanda. We are. We will, we will tickle your ears. That's that's horrible. That's that's. Welcome to Just straight go, up Rob. Tomorrow. Do the promo, would you? Tell them about Just the five-star review. Leave a comment. Yeah. I've done you just won't I've, talk I've about our Twitter lot. handles. You just won't talk about the the Apple iTunes, the five star comments, the the five star reviews. I'm saying, and yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Good promo skills. Way to go. We also have an audio version of this this video podcast. Uh, you can check us out. Where Ocho? Where can you find our podcast? Everywhere. I they're in my headphones right now. Look. Yeah, it's no I, podcast. I, I, there we go. You can follow us uh, anywhere. Podcasts are found. Uh, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, uh, I, uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts is closing down. So please don't 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 subscribe to us on there because you'll just you'll be fucked once they close it down. So, uh, but we are in all major podcast platforms, um, and our X handles or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I am at Rad Rob Gaming. That guy over there to my right is at the Drocho, and this sexy gentleman right. 
down down there uh, is at JPJR07. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well. Uh, and X at Straight Up 5 Podcast. That's straight up the number five podcast on X, Instagram, and TikTok, which I'm still trying to figure out how to fucking how to do ticks and talks. So uh, it, it's a young man's game, and that's clearly not me. Rob, well, your, your Twitter handle, does that mean uh, you, you have a, a fish uh, sent to you when you said gaming? Gaming. Ing. Gaming. Right, 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 yeah. right. The, the C was silent. Which I'm also a Twitch gaming streamer. I stream every Tuesday night and Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Rad Rob Gaming if you want to check me out there. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rad Rob Gaming. I never plug my stuff. That's one thing I never ever Rob, do. Rob, you plug yourself shows. all the time and you it's, tell us about it. So it's, you can it's stop not that about right me. Now. It's not about me. But uh, every now and then I do like to plug myself. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Troy Lynn is in the house. Good evening, Troy. We're just wrapping up here. Thank sir, you, Troy, for being here. And good to see happy you, Troy. And, uh, birthday to Troy Lynn. Happy, happy 25th. Oh, shit. He's on the senior. No, I think he's 64 now, right? Don't don't out him. He's under. He's 42. 64. Yeah. Uh, uh, Troy Palomalu's uh, jersey. That's what he is. I'm he's 43. Uh, and I'm sure Doc Sullivan wished you a happy birthday as well, Troy. Your uh, your number one fan. I still have to unlock that guy. I really do because I want I want to unblock him and give him the link to our podcast and say, "Here, Shit, we talk you know about what? you." I, all, I think I got a DM time, from Doc. him. Not even joking. I swear. Yeah. I and I never looked at it. I... Shit. Oh no, it wasn't him. No, who did I? No, no, no. Shit. It was um. <laughs> Who's the guy? That... Stan. I think Stan hit me up and. Uh... Stan Young. Yes. I think it just doesn't. Uh, yeah, nah, it's all right. I, I probably just sc- scribbled it out. Stan. Stan Young is a uh, is a valuable. Is Stan member friends of with Troy Spotify. or like? I, he might be. I don't know. I don't know. He's definitely right. not friends with Belmo because he has a shirt yeah, called Blomo. So there's that. There is. And is that. his name Stan or was it Dan? That's the part I don't remember. Dan. It's, it's Dan Young, but he. It, oh fuck him! He's Stan. All right. So probably, <laughs> he's lovingly called Stan by uh, the I greatest think, bowler of all time. Well, how the hell did he get to me? I'm Ocho. Damn it. We need a shirt that says "I'm Mocho." Damn it, we got. We really got to get on this. Nah, that's it. That's 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 screwing up the uh, "I'm Gumby." Damn it thing. We can't. We can't rip off SNL. It's all right. We, we have a uh, little over eight and a half here before we get to sixty minutes. That's going to be our cutoff line. So, anybody got anything to say at, before we wrap it up here? Uh, Don't challenge okay, Ocho, right. Johnny. Oof. Except Amanda, because that sounds like fun. Uh, I guess I'll say something a little bit deep. Sure. Uh, and oh, it's shit. Good life. Do it, it uh, consistently, it. and you'll see results. Anything like plugging yourself and, and you know whatnot. You do anything consistently, you're going to see results, for better or worse. You'll be the best. How about addict. Ocho that hasn't picked up a weight since COVID and still has the largest arms in the podcast? <coughs> it really is. You know, they say Better. certain people just have the correct genetics and shit like that. If I stop weightlifting for a day, I really feel like I go from like uh, Razor Ramon to a snowman. That's what I feel like from one day of not lifting. He hasn't lifted in a year and he continues to grow and stay lean. It's when you say fro- when you say snowman, I mean are you talking like Frosty or or Olaf from Frozen. I'm talking I mean, about like just a, a hunk of a doughy, snow that's a doughy. Like, uh, how about we just say? That? How about the like Pillsbury Doughboy, but big and tall? You could just say Rad Rob. That's all you had to say. All fattered right. Rad Rob. Well, I would go from Razor Ramon to Fattered Rob. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh... On that maybe, note, maybe I, maybe I do wall push ups. You just don't know. No, you don't. No, no, I don't. No, wall push ups wouldn't make you reach hypertrophy to keep those peaks. It doesn't so matter. Either you're, either you're lying to us. And you I have shown it. you how. All the five different heck? sets of dumbbells in your room. Or you go every single morning before work or after to no. retro fitness. It's luckily, if, I, if we didn't have this show and I wasn't passive resisting. <laughs> By flexing, I'd have nothing left. And I got to post pictures of two years ago when I was working out. And then Amanda would really be like, oh, God. 
I'm going to lose to this guy. Oh, man. Man, I have a crush on you. On that note, gentlemen, uh, I hope you guys have a good week. hope everybody in our chat has a great week as well. Uh, we enjoy uh, having you here each and every week on the Rad Rob Radio Network, our YouTube channel, Straight Up 5. If you're not subscribed to that, if you're watching on Johnny's channel and you're not watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Straight Up 5 Podcast. We got 4,300. I forgot to tell you guys. We got 4,300 views on Bakes on his video. That video keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. I, I send you a screenshot every couple of days, and it seems to go up like 500 views every day. So I don't know how that got into the algorithms uh, compared to the rest of the shows. I mean, not that we're doing poorly in the other shows, but holy shit. Yeah, um, same thing. He's a, he's a, he's a draw. Ocho. What you t- <laughs> we already went through Twitter. Handle. I'm not going to do that joke anymore. Guys, I'm filibustering. We appreciate every, uh, each and every one of you here on Certified with Johnny Petrago Jr. We'll see you next Thank week. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Good night. And as always, Mr. Sullivan. Go for it.